All right. I wanted to record a relatively quick video uh, about what I view will be the only Tesla catalyst of 2023 or 2024 that matters. And so I wrote a little tweet thread on this just to outline my thesis. I believe that Tesla will 100% offer free or ridiculously cheap trials of FSD subscription for all the hardware capable vehicles in the fleet sometime in the next two years. That will be the day that Tesla FSD crosses the chasm into mainstream adoption. This is not well understood. Current pricing is specifically designed to right size the number and increase quality of beta testers by requiring significant skin in the game. This provides all the needed data to continue building FSD quickly without exposing beta software to unnecessary risk or abusive behavior. Once software is provably safer than average human in all driving conditions without intervention, they can offer free trials to entire fleet with minimal risk of bad actors abusing the system and causing crashes and PR disaster. Beyond this point, Tesla will offer a little something for everyone, cheap su subscriptions for purely personal use, a variety of more expensive but 200% viable licensing options for commercial use based on application type and fleet size. And over time, take rate will approach 100% of the installed vehicle base as every Tesla owner receives unprecedented utility. Recurring software revenue will skyrocket, gross and net margins will become obscene, and Tesla stock will go bananas. That's the, the core of the thesis. But there is a criticism that we as retail investors often get from the more institutional types like Gary Black that assigning value to robo taxi specifically is a pie in the sky exercise that we really need to think a little bit more concretely about this and so after some discussion i actually agree with him in that i think we really need to think about the intermediate step between fsd being fully licensed or fully able to be used in production for personal use out of beta but not necessarily to the point where it is has regulatory approval to be used in a robo taxi application and so i've actually created a little bit of a model here to explore what type of incremental value could tesla see on the day that it offers that free trial of FSD to the entire fleet in a major market. So it'll probably start with the US and then roll out to say China and then potentially the EU. But on the day that those free trials are offered, I believe that we can start modeling in or expecting to see a very significant uptake in SaaS revenues that are basically pure net margin revenues. And so I'm making some assumptions here in this model. I'm saying that Tesla will continue to improve functionality and utility of FSD for personal use from now until 2030. I'm saying that Tesla will pursue an aggressive pricing strategy to maximize FSD subscription take rate and revenues once safety passes a critical threshold. Tesla will price one-time purchases of FSD prohibitively to drive subscription revenue. And Tesla will offer free trials of FSD to the fleet, major market by major market, after the critical safety threshold has been passed. Tesla will not license FSD for commercial use before 2030 as part of this model. Tesla FSD will achieve exceptional level two autonomy in 2024. They'll achieve level three-ish autonomy in 2025. I'll go to some tweets here in just a second that break down a little bit more what I mean when I say level two exceptional, level three-ish and level four. Tesla FSD will achieve level four autonomy for personal use specifically in 2026, and that it will be fair to assign some incremental value to the stock price upon release of the free trials. So let's hop over and look at the polls that I ran. I conducted three sets of polls. Now this is not the most scientific way to gather this data, and I have a limited number of options that I can place here, and so it's hard to get a completely objective and scientific 
read on this, but this is a quick and dirty poll that I ran just for the purposes of conducting the thought exercise of creating this model. This model is not something that anyone should be taking to the bank, obviously not financial advice. This is just something that I'm creating to try and think through what type of SaaS revenue we can put on the table for Tesla in a pure personal use FSD world. I asked, if you owned a Tesla, what is the most that you would be willing to pay for an FSD subscription that required you to pay attention at all times, but was so good that you only needed to intervene less than five times per month? I offered options of $25 a month, $50 a month, and $100 a month. So then I also asked a second poll. So if you owned a Tesla, this is the level three-ish. So this one was level two. This is what I'm calling level three-ish. If you owned a Tesla, what is the most you'd be willing to pay for an FSD subscription that required you to sit in the driver's seat, but you didn't have to pay attention unless alerted by the car? And then I offered $75, $150, and $225 a month options. And you can see the results here. And lastly, the level four poll. If you owned a Tesla, what is the most that you would be willing to pay for an FSD subscription for purely personal use that could drive to pick you or your loved ones up without anyone in the car? Obviously, if it can do that, you can sleep in the back. You don't have to pay attention. The options I gave for that were $150 a month, $300 a month, and $450 a month. And you can see the results here. And so let's go back and dig into the model now. So this model is aimed, like I said earlier, at a more institutional type buyer to help get them thinking about SaaS revenues like I talked about for Tesla that is pure margin. In the event that we can see FSD get to completely wide release, not in beta, and that Tesla will pursue, like I said, basically a no-brainer pricing strategy to maximize take rate and revenue. And so this is very quick and dirty. What I did here was I worked back into roughly 10 million deliveries in 2030, since I know that this is a number that is much more palatable to institutional investors. Obviously, this is well below Elon's targets, but this is the number that I'm using in this model. I'm basically just saying that we're going to have 3 million units in the fleet that are FSD capable at the end of 2022. There will be 2 million deliveries in 2023. And then I have a CAGR kind of declining from 2024 all the way to 2030 that gets us to that 10 million units delivered in 2030. So the installed base at the end of 2022 would be 3 million, then 5 million in 2023, and so on as you see these deliveries being added to the installed base. Then I assume an FSD subscription take rate that will be growing over time, 20%. And this is the subscription only. This is not those who have purchased FSD outright. So this is FSD subscription take rate. We're saying 20% in 2023. 25% in 2024, just growing 5% per year from now until 2030, at which point I would expect it to taper off. This will never reach 100% of the fleet, but it will move in that direction over time. I don't expect this to actually reach 100% of the fleet over time for several reasons. One being that I don't expect it to be available in any and every jurisdiction, and also I do not expect every single vehicle that Tesla makes to be capable of doing an FSD subscription. I believe that there probably will be some commercial use vehicles, semi being one example, or many, basically any fleet uh, like Hertz is basically anything in Hertz's fleet is going to be a car in the installed base that wouldn't necessarily fall within this model for personal FSD subscription SaaS revenue. So then for the FSD ARR, I'm assuming that at that 20% take rate that people would be paying $50 a month only for FSD 
and then you multiply that by 12 months and you get your $600. So I feel like this number is relatively conservative. Moving into 2024, what I did was I actually used the weighted average from my poll. And so I, like I said, I offered people options of 25, 50, and $100. You can see the results here. I actually threw out the other option because I'm assuming that the those willing to pay more than the options presented will actually cancel out those who are willing to pay less and that the average will remain somewhat the same-ish. Like I said, this is really quick and dirty. But the weighted average for the level two poll came out to $65.90 per month or $790.79 per year. On the level three poll, the weighted average was $156.33 per month or $1,875.97 per year. And then on the level four poll, we ended up with a weighted average of $291.12, $3,493.42 per year. Of the 291 was per month. So then if we take those and we go back into the average FSD ARR, what I've done here is I've averaged these. So what I think is one possible strategy that Tesla could pursue is they could actually offer varying levels of FSD capability to users and then charge different rates based on the different levels of functionality. And so you could buy FSD level two and you could pay the $65 a month, or you could buy FSD level three and you could pay $156 a month. And so what I have here is this is just the average of the level one or sorry, the level two and the level three. And so that multiplied by the 30% take rate on the installed base in 2025 produces 4 billion in revenues in 2025. Then in 2026, actually, since I believe that there will be level four capability in 2026, or at least that's what I'm modeling for, I go ahead and throw that into the average. It moves the average FSD AR up to $2,000 roughly a month there. And so we see since the installed base has grown to 15 and a half, million cars in 2026 the take rate is 35% at that time and our $2000 average ARR on FSD produces 11 billion dollars of pure FSD SaaS revenue in 2026 in this model um, and so we run that out to 2030 we end up with roughly 52 billion dollars pure net margin FSD revenue in 2030 and then if we assign that a 50 multiple, but we say that, hey, I think that it's only 60% likely that we will reach those numbers. I'm gonna go ahead and put that basically a safety factor into this DCF that I'm gonna run. I'm gonna say the risk-free rate is 7% per year. And I'm going to assume 3% inflation in the outstanding share count in up to 2030. And so if I do all that and I discount that back to today, I get an incremental share value, or not to today. If I discount that back to the point in 2023-ish where I expect that they start offering those free in 2023 where I expect them to start offering that free trial, then at that point, I think you could fairly assume a $167 incremental value added to the share price at that point in time. So that's the, that's the idea behind this model. Like I said, it's really a thought exercise. The way that I probably would think about this is more in orders of magnitude. And so I would say, that these SaaS revenue possibility should offer somewhere on the order of $100 roughly of incremental value at that point in time. And then I'll go ahead and post a link to this video in the description, or not this video, sorry, this model in the description for anyone who wants to jump in here 
play around with my, the numbers. I'm sure uh, lots of people will disagree with my assumptions and they'll want to put in numbers that reflect their own beliefs about the future. But I do believe that this is a semi-conservative potential future that Tesla could pursue. Basically, a, a base case on FSD. Basically, if we can track the progress of FSD and we see that level four really is in the cards, this is something that we can use in our toolbox to assign, hey, what's the base case? What's the floor on the value that should provide to Tesla as a stock over the next five, 10 years?